that you have. Amen. He's my friend, and, and make sure you take care of him, or else the military man will come to stone him. God bless you. I know you're doing that, and we appreciate it. <laughs> Amen. The mission is possible. It certainly is. Let me just read in your hearing. Or let us let us read together. Amen. St. Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. St. Matthew 10, verse 16. And also St. Luke 10, verse 2. Amen. I particularly like when we, we read together. If you don't mind, and if you have your Bibles, if not, then I'll just read in your hearing. Amen. But you should bring your Bibles to church. <laughs> regardless of the meeting that you're having. Amen. If you found it, please stand with me. I'm going to read from St. Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, and then St. Matthew 10, verse 16, St. Luke 10, verse 2. Let's begin at St. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came. Let's read together. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. St. Matthew 10, verse 16. Please say amen when you're here. And we will continue. St. Matthew 10, verse 16. All right, let us begin. Behold, I send you forth the sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as a Let us begin. Therefore, said he, harvest truly is great. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth the laborers into his harvest. Father, we thank you for the written word. Speak to us now, edify us, your children, and empower us, O oh God, to continue in the missions and to realize the possibility of missions. Have your way now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the Great Commission to go. This was given by the Lord Jesus, who we all know is God manifested in the flesh. It was not only given within the context to his disciples, who are the word of the apostles, but also the disciples of today, we who have become followers of Christ, have now become the disciples of today. Amen. So, The word that he has he had spoken to go has certainly been perpetuated as a result. And it has been fulfilled, giving divine success today. Amen. When Jesus said go, not even hell could prevail and stop the church from going. Even today, regardless of what the area may be like, what is happening there, you always have a people, a resilient people, that are ready and willing to go. I recall some years ago, when Jonestown was on fire, 
gunshots all around and so forth. We had a pastor there with one of our apostolic churches. And nobody would visit her. <laughs> she got no help, per se. And the church dwindled and dwindled until it almost died. I was overseas at the time. When I came back from training, I understood her plight. And then I said, well, look, none of us can preserve our lives. Anybody can preserve their lives? If you can, you know, tell me, because I want to live, so I want to learn the secret. Our lives consist we exist in God. Are you with me? You can't die except God says so. And you can't live alone except He says so. Drink all the milk you want. Boy, I've been fasting and fasting. In two days I wasn't fasting. And the more we fast, the fatter I get. God have mercy, help me. I don't know what is happening with this. The devil is a liar, he's telling me, you see, the more you fast, the faster you get. So stop fast, the devil is a liar. Hello. So, in as much as we have to take care of our bodies and be sensible in what we do, but it is God who gives life and takes it away. Anytime you have that solidified in your mind, it makes you as bold as a lion. It don't matter what is happening. It does not matter what is happening anywhere. There's no fear in going forward to do the work and will of God. I know sometimes some of you are afraid of a cockroach. Right? <laughs> God can help you to overcome that fear. Even that fear. Fear of lizards. Don't tell Sister James that story. God can help you to overcome that fear. So I went there in Jonestown. And I helped her as best as I could. And the church stabilized. It ultimately recovered. I'm still helping her. And they have a relatively vibrant congregation there. We recently had a missions meeting down there. A couple of people got baptized and the rest of it. And we thank God for that. Amen. Amen. But because God said it already, go. The mission is already possible. Yeah. But when he said go, it doesn't mean that there are a selected few that should go. He said go to his disciples. They were drawn out of the world. They were his people. They were his sons. Amen. And he was their leader. So once God says go, the go is unique and specific to the church. Once you are born again and you come into the body of Christ, the church of the living God, you and I have a responsibility as disciples to go and become fishers of men. Hallelujah. 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 We have to work the mission in order to bring continuity to the church, both physically and spiritually replenishing the body of Christ. So missions is paramount. It's the lifeblood of the church. Jesus. Hallelujah. Without missions, the church, the assembly will die. 
it will bring the it will wither and ultimately it will die get a cut or something to that effect and don't pay attention to the cutting system or trying to stop the bleeding pretty soon you go into cardiac arrest and shortly thereafter you will die just as how your blood, and I'm just saying this simplistically, just as how your blood is vital to the running of your system, missions is vital, absolutely important to the operation and longevity of the church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So missions must be given priority in any assembly if you wish to perpetuate and to live, if you wish to continue. You must then go in order to grow. If you don't go, you can't grow. That is why the Lord said, go into all the world. Preach the gospel. Do this. Do that. That men shall be saved. So it's the going that perpetuates the growing. So then, sorry, the church must equip, edify, and prepare itself for the harvest which is continually and always white and ripe for the reaping. The harvest is truly great. And can I tell you, if every one of us, as we should, as born again believers, say that sanctify and in the house of God, if every one of us understood our responsibility as a born again believer and became faithful to that calling and responsibility you'd have to buy up the whole of this case and you would need more for persons amen to fit in this case if every one of us target one person hallelujah, to evangelize, and this was a strategy I, I started to introduce as a missions president in our churches. Everyone for at least a year, it may not be that long before you convert as a person, but target one person. Be it a brother, a sister, a friend, a co-worker. And we give you the choice. You choose who you want to target. Because some people try to look at them, you know, say, they can't target that one. <laughs> uh, next year, you know, we... I'm just saying that. Amen. Permission there for that. But you choose for yourself who you will target. And then that person, you make acquaintance if you're not already acquainted. Get to know the person, birthday, and whatever, send them a text, whatever. Develop a rapport, a friendship. Because some people believe that as you see persons, you must have, you must be born again. You must be baptized in Jesus' name. If you're not baptized in Jesus' name, you're going to hell. You're in the wrong church. Come on. Absolutely wrong approach. Because sometimes you start by saying that people despise you straight away. And lock their ears. And all of them say, mm, mm, mm. Sometimes they say, mm, mm, when they say, mm, mm, Because they're not listening to you. Are you with me? Wrong approach. You turn, turn them off. Build a rapport, a friendship. Invite them to church. Because if, if, if you are not having a type of relationship with somebody, it's more difficult to get them to accede to your request. If you and I are friends, and I say, Bishop, 
um, could you do that for me, sir? Blah, blah, blah. Quickly, he likes to have it done, and so forth, and vice versa, because we're friends and brothers. But the person who you don't even know will ask you to do something that will take effort. Not all of us will do it. Hello? Hello? Tell the truth, man. I read several contexts later. <laughs> are you with me? But when we are acquainted, it's easier to share information to get things done between us. So you make that acquaintance, target that person, start inviting them to church over time, and then you introduce the doctrines and the teachings and whatever. And then pretty soon, I guarantee you, when you have the trust and confidence of that person, they'll start believing what you say. So if you target one person for the year, I am absolutely sure by the power of the Holy Ghost invested in you, that person by the end of the year would have been born again, give their life to God, or pretty much very, very close to getting it done. And you would have seen and experienced, amen, such a great influx of souls in the church. But sometimes persons come and they are bench warmers. Quiet for me, you know what I mean? I won't say that you're not sleeping. <laughs> you can't come to the Lord as a bench warmer. Once you have come and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you are a worker. You are a vessel, potentially, that God can use and wants to use. Now the misconception is that you may think that as a vessel you have to come in the pulpit. As a worker you have to go to maybe sing in the choir or do something else or whatever. As a vessel of Almighty God, once you recognize that the Holy Ghost is in you. You are God's mouthpiece. You are his hands. You are his feet. Once you recognize that, the wayside can be upon you. Your home can be upon you. Your workplace can be upon you. Hallelujah. Because sometimes we can put you up here your feet. You know? <laughs> Come on. As we put you up there, the blood go and leave your head and drop a rope. Come on. So not everyone will come into the pulpit. But you can make a pulpit anywhere you are. Yes. It can be a pulpit on the bus. Yes. And I don't mean you have to go bellow out and clash with nobody on the bus. And I see a man preach a clash on the bus or something. <laughs> Just a gentle, quiet whisper to somebody. You know that Jesus loves you, man. And you give a testimony and the rest of it. And you're gone. Just today, I met a, a sister. Did you even remember her? She migrated over 20 years ago. And she said something that I don't, I didn't even remember. She said to me, Elna, from I came to know you, you have been a worker in the kingdom. She said to me, she remembered that there were some overseas preachers that came to a particular convention. And they were teaching about the laying on of hands on people to receive the Holy Ghost. I don't know who you can teach that. Because the laying on of hands is a gift from God. And we don't give people the Holy Ghost. So some day come out and pop out their head and make noise in the ears and all that. Stop it. You can lay hands on them and pray for them because you can't give them the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is given only by God. You can pray for them. And don't get too excited too because sometimes you're breaking their concentration. And I, I, I just say that by the Holy Ghost. It's a reality. So they were teaching the laying on of hands. Did you remember that? 
She said to me after they finished teaching and they left, I got up and I said, I'm willing to take my lunch time with persons who want to receive the Holy Ghost to pray with them. She reminded me, long story short, that four persons got the Holy Ghost before lunchtime was over. Hallelujah. Now, if I saw myself as insignificant to these foreign people, because sometimes we only respect foreign people. <laughs> Hello. If any of you must come and lay hand on me and pray, you don't even get anointed. And how many pre out let this come up? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But a foreign man come and say, In the name of Jesus, and just point by you, you tear down the bench and kick over. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, I'm, not, I'm not knocking persons, but I'm just saying the reality. We become respect of persons. And because we become respect of persons, we be debase ourselves within their eyes when oftentimes we, we are more anointed than many of these. So the point I'm making is don't berate yourself. Don't think that you're so insignificant that you can't get involved, you can't contribute. Once you're baptized, once you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you are a worker and you must get involved. You must get involved. You must get involved. It's not just about anybody's business and not your business. It is your business. Missions is your business. It's everybody's business. It's the life blood of the church. Hallelujah. We from time to time have persons come into the assembly with unsaved husbands, wives, and children. And oftentimes, I, I'm not knocking anybody, but I oftentimes pity these persons and pray for them. Because I believe if God has changed you, and you are the one saved person in your house, every day you must march around it. As for me and my house, you have to declare some things in that house. You have to evangelize the people in your house. You have to live so that the beauty of Jesus be seen in you. So that in itself is evangelism. Are you with me? Pretty soon, those persons in your house should come to Jesus. One sister said, Amen. And I give you her testimony. Husband was a drunk. You can come in sometime, he will go on to abuse her, but she was stronger than him. <laughs> so he could do no for her. So she does hang him down with the nine rocks. He didn't even drop him to sleep, he didn't mind. But then she said, she said to herself, No man, I can't allow the man to sleep on the floor till morning. And she would pick him up after she cleaned him up, pick him up, dress him and put him in his bed. And the rest of it. She said, every night that he came in drunk, mm -hmm. when she put him in the bed, she would kneel down beside him, rest her hand over him, and pray, pray till sometimes she'll drop asleep on her knees. Next morning she'll wake up her knees well. Pray him over the drunk. I don't know what it seemed like. Somehow, in a state, and said, I'm drunk, but I'm fool him. <laughs> if I hear that term, so all at that time, Tom was here in the prayer. <laughs> so one night, no, Tom spring himself with drunk. <laughs> like he drunk. I'm coming and was staggering and doing him drunken thing. Yeah. She fling down Tom's ear and pick him up and put him in the bed. She started praying over the man. And the man raised up, hugged her, and he embarked like a little baby. Shortly after, he was baptized. 
in the name of Jesus. Simply because of our persistence. So, let me tell you, I cannot say man is yours, man. But the identification, the potential call, it must be that the individual feels an urge, has a desire, or a calling to spring into action as part of the mission scheme. Hallelujah. It must also be, amen, that the leader identify such a person who has the potential and the potential to be honed and trained in missions leadership. Though everybody has the prerequisite and the potential, 
not everybody has the quality and potential to be owned as a leader. Now let me qualify that. Let me qualify that. Everyone is a leader in their own right. Amen. So at your level, you can evangelize, you can do, you can talk to people, you can spread the word at your level. But then, when it comes to an organized echelon, an organized set of persons who will say, all right, you're in charge of that area to do that, you're in charge to do that, you must do that, you must accomplish that. It takes somebody now with that type of potential of leadership that can be honed and that can be brought into a state and condition that they can be used of the assembly without embarrassing themselves or embarrassing the church. Do you follow me? Is that clear? You understand what I'm saying? So everyone has the potential prerequisite. But not everyone will move to the echelon where that person will lead other persons into missions. And if I'm making it clear. Alright, let me put it another way. You will have a set of private soldiers. Let's say 10. All 10 are within the same rank. All 10 are private. All 10 have the same responsibilities and the same expectation from all 10 is required. However, among the 10, there may be two or three that always holds the attention of the seven. Hello. Every time the discussion is taking place, one of those three is the moderator and controls the dialogue and so forth. Are you with me? Yeah. Out of the ten, you may have two or three who will say, come let's go do that. And all the rest follow. Because he has that level of command and control. Though all of them influence too. Though all of them are within the same range and category of being and existence. But three rise above the rest. So those three will now be identified as the leaders of seven. Yeah. So those three, you give each of them two each and the other one three persons, three, three persons as the leader of those groups. So that's what I'm saying to you. Everybody has the potential. All right. But there are some that we can identify to bring the leadership echelon into focus. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The point now is, if you are identified, you cannot say that you're unavailable. Make your time for it. <laughs> Let me walk you out with it. Think about it. If you are identified, if I identify a couple of privates within my company as the officer commanding, and I say, all right, private bloggings and private watch, I've seen where I can promote you to Lance Corporals, you will be in charge. Which person under this sun ever refused promotion? <laughs> Hello? What we are looking at sometimes, we are expecting that the level of 
elevation will put us through the roof. And it's not like that. You move stage from stage to stage. So once you're identified, once a leader identifies you, you cannot say that you're not available. You see him once say, we are soldiers in the army. So we want if a dad's army. Because even in a dad's army, you have to take instructions. Are you with me? So once you're identified by brothers and sisters, you cannot, if you have said it before, go beg God pardon and retrace a step. You cannot say. Because we have a way you now. We put work as priority. Family as priority. Hello, come on. Business venture as priority. We are the local business, I mean. We know God can shut down your business with just one. Uh -huh. Don't worry. Hello. You are in God's business. It's God you're dealing with. So if God say, I want you to do so and so, you don't tell him no. <laughs> when the person identifies you, know, it's not necessarily the person just. Um, <laughs> the person must be hearing from God and seeing what you're doing. Yeah. Potential, write it down, can never be hidden. You can't hide potential. Potential can never be hit. So once that potential is there and it is seen and it's identified, you cannot say no. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all and his righteousness and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So the things that you're running away, you're running to. That is eluding you. Stop running down, man. Hello, hello, stop running. I just remember this. Let me tell you. When I was a, a, a young boy, a little boy, maybe 4, 10, 12 years old, we saw a little man who castrate dog. We call him Dr. Nar. It was a doctor in the place. Anybody want them dog himself? Just come to Dr. Nar. But I used to like talk to Dr. Nar because he was a man of wisdom. And I like I like persons like those who I gravitate to so I can learn from. So Dr. Nar would say to me, young boy, Bishop stop my <laughs> Dr. Nair said, young boy, three things you don't run down in life. Position, woman, and boss. Let me tell you already. <laughs> Hello. Position, woman, and boss. Dr. Nair told me that when I was a 10-year-old boy, and I still remember to this day, and I don't run down in life. I take Dr. Nair's advice. You roll it down, you run left him. Yeah. Roll down, boss him back, we're gonna kill you. When you try to hop on. Hallelujah. It's not that you're going to be running after, or you shouldn't be running after. But when God really come drop in your lap, Hallelujah. You need to rise up Jesus. and do the work of ministry as God wants you to do. Too much lazy people in a church and God chastises you already. So the rest soon get your chastisement. We are weak. Too many persons are comfortable just to come to church Sunday and come back next Sunday. That's not it. That's not the kingdom business. You're in our next business and a kingdom business that. Hello. But once you're in kingdom business, the sacrifices, the energies, your money, your intellect, your everything will be pushed into the kingdom work of God. Yeah. I, I love King, I love God. Yeah. Some people have talked about they love God, Bishop and Malaya. Sure. Now listen to them. They trick you. <laughs> well, I love the Lord. Yeah. And big testimony. Now both of our tambourine. Now which Lord? 
You don't know him yet. Yeah. I love the Lord. Father, if you love the Lord, then we can't get you from a prayer meeting. We can't get you one mission service. Not only the church that we can't get you. We can't get your contribute. Oh Which Lord you love? Know? <laughs> <Not> the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> if you love the Lord, yes. there will be something in you yes. that goes after God. Let me tell you, people, I love the Lord. We love church anyway. Go anyway there. We find it. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I wish there was one more day in the week. Doing the will of God. Trying to help people. Sometimes my wife and I, at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, we come in from New Market, Westmoreland, all kind of place. The love for God. Go help people. And God bless you again when we go. <laughs> My God, told me that twelve thousand dollars worth of ultra loan. I'm going to preach on this stuff. But it's the will and the work of God. If you don't get the reward there, it's already reserved. I don't want no empty crown. I want stars and the crown. Hallelujah. And I love God. So look, if you say you love God and you weren't doing anything, man, say, God, maybe you think me love you. Repent. Repent, man. Lord, I thought I loved you. But when I hear the exposition, I want to go deeper. Hallelujah. I want to go higher. I want to have relationship with you. I want to get intimate with you. Because when God gets intimate with you, oh hallelujah, and start to, to work upon you and use you, my brother, sister, and friend, amen, not no sweet, so, and you want to work for him. You want to tell everybody about him. You want somebody to experience what you get experiencing. Show us that you love him. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. If you love me, keep my commandments. One of them is a go. That's one of the commandments. Go into all the world. You're keeping that? Are we doing that? It's everybody's business. And it's not that we're looking for people for the church to build the administrative and financial coffers of the church. It's not that. We are bringing people in for the kingdom. kingdom. Hallelujah. John said, who are these? 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. These are they who wash their own. Amen. And I pay their life in the blood of the Lamb. Hello, here's somebody. Come on. Let's help each other make it home and help others too. So the laborer, when he's called, there are some responsibilities. The first one is, once you offer yourself to work for missions and work for God, understand that you are accountable to God. You have a responsibility once you are identified that you are accountable to God for your stewardship. Hallelujah. So if you are a missionary, you must be the best missionary. If you are an evangelist, you must be the best evangelist. If you are just the supporting element of missions, you must be the best supporting element that missions ever have. Amen. Be the best in everything. Be professional. I'm a godly professional person. Some of us in corporate society, my God help. <laughs> no, you're getting big pain. Come on now. At the end of the day, if anything should happen to you, somebody else take your position quicker than they can bury you. No. Not with me. And you, you labor and give free time. No free time. You come a 
watch her, you gotta watch God. <laughs> you have no time for God. By the time you reach home, you can't think say a good prayer. Hmm? You have to make certain I you know for the week. Yeah. Where are you going to be? You know if you have to live past Monday. <laughs> but you have to know. And sometimes when one doesn't look good or whatever, and you don't think that at the Monday suit, you will pick up again. Instead of coming back to church Sunday night. You are high on Monday suit Sunday night. Yeah. And when Monday morning comes, you still don't know how you make up your mind where you are. Hello, Sapa. We give credence and we place efforts. Work through all your lunch time. Hello. My God, when you are bed, she soon get all cold by your desk. You won't even leave the desk and go to the lunchroom. It's soup and then bring a cold on your desk. Yeah. And you have a bell to your belly. Or you drink your soup. Yeah. Work man, back from work. Yeah. We have to send in the report by hex night. If you don't send the report, I'll send the report. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, somebody. But if you call your a whore, watch with me one more. Yeah. Let us pray for an hour. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. You will tell pastor, say, pastor, I'm half million. But the flesh weak, you know, weak when you're near. Yeah. <laughs> Am I speaking? Yeah. Yeah. We are accountable to God. For our stewardship, once we are called, amen, as laborers. Let me run on quickly. We are accountable to our leaders. We are accountable for obedience, to carry out the best the instructions to the best of our ability, to always have effective communication, dialogue, and reporting. We are accountable to the leader. You can't go to missions and the pastor will call you. So what happened over there? Hello. Well, let me tell you. If you send me a mission and you're not there per se, let's say, we go on missions. So not every mission, the pastor will be there. But you send me a mission and you're not there, if we come back 12 o'clock after a mission, then we'll wait you. That's me, no. I'm telling you to do that. A little too many come What me with you? Can me can work on your sleep? Hello, stop. All of the same boat. We are linked. Linked in the chain. Work us together with Christ. So if we come back to the doctor, Pastor, we now say we show this step. Pastor. I tell you something, the meeting was good. Verbal report, you know, I think you read The meeting was good. Five people filled. We want to baptize them next week, so let's start. All right, so I'll go back to sleep. Done. But you're accountable. You must have dialogue and report. You work with somebody, you work under somebody who works under God. You think, you think, you think, Bishop, not accountable? You better guess again. You better pray for him too. Yeah. Because then load the heavy. Yeah. No for counting that. Yeah. Hello. Pray for him. Yeah. Because when leaders are true and faithful, it's a great burden. That's right. Oh, you're not here. Right. Let me say it again. Ah. When lead your pastor, sir. <laughs> when leaders are true and faithful, it is a challenge and a burden for them. Because sometimes at night, when you when you are snoring, they are on the knees with you and you are asleep. You should have prayed about your problem and I pray about it. 
They yeah. want to ensure that your welfare, spiritually and otherwise, is good. Yeah. They have their families to attend to. Yeah. Come on here. Yeah. But oftentimes they are taken up mentally yeah. the with the burden of the souls, the church, everything. Because you think if this thing I go down, you, know, you can walk like it. And you, and you don't tell nobody say me you so go with it. You hide that and nobody will know. But the whole of it knows it. Maybe some brown control. <laughs> Hello, the whole Jamaica know all far in England and all in place too. So anyhow, things go down my field. You think they go down? No, but it's a manner. How we want that? The first word or the first name out of their mouth. Don't tell you nothing about the bishop. You see that wrong? <laughs> we didn't know him. We kid them all, we kid. If you didn't know him, I'm here thinking, I just saw him. We didn't know. And you know, you know what, what people will say. So it's not his business alone, it's all of us. He's accountable, and you are accountable likewise. Let me run on. The laborers or the reapers, the workers, must be examples for others who will later join the fraternity of missions. Missions continue to move forward and there are persons that will move out and some will move in. So those who are in it and moving on, you have to set the type of example for those who are coming to emulate and to follow. If you are a missionary, you can just hold the title. And it's only title business alone. If you hold the title, you have to work. Let me say that differently. If you hold the title, you have to work. <laughs> when I took over missions in the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, one of my recommendations was to defrock some of these people. Those who are not working in, in missions and events, if you have the title, give it up. <laughs> Hello, sir. We don't have a joke business. Yeah. This is end time, yeah. and we want to work for God. The urgency of the coming of the Lord is near, yes. and we must do the work of the Lord. Okay. So if you have title, just a sit up and bishop, take it away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you better give it up before you take it. Uh -huh. That is no shame. We can't have titles and are profiling with titles, being pedestal people with titles. The title don't do the work, but the title is there to recognize you as the workhorse. I say that permissively. The title there is to show that you are one of the frontline troops. Yeah. You are one that is bringing the charge and firing back at the enemy. That's what the title does. Amen. It doesn't put you in cloud nine. My God. I need to thank you. <laughs> your title brings recognition to your office. Now let me say this and appeal to you. Respect your office as missionaries and elders and whatever rank you have. Respect your office. Yeah. Your office requires you to get involved, get involved. Your office requires you to set the example, set the example. Yeah. Your office requires you to do the work of an evangelist, study to show yourself approved, empower yourself, amen, by building up your knowledge base, your spiritual knowledge base, you have a responsibility to your rank and your office. Don't just have it so that you can be first in the line to get food. <laughs> so places you go, yes, sir. Yes, sir. minister first. <laughs> you know, you know, sit on my head table, minister. <laughs> you know, get evangelist, you must go eat food first. <laughs> You get the rank 
to identify you as the worker. Yeah. This is the worker being. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. So I say again, if you have it, I know work with it. Yeah. Come quietly to the bishop and say, well. Yeah. Or you can put yourself on probation. Yeah. So then bishop, all right, watch me for another three months. I'm going to improve, sir. And once I've improved, let me keep it. But if there is no improvement, be honest with yourself, church people must get honest. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. We must start being honest, forthright, and truthful. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. We can't be like the world. Come out from among them. All liars yeah. shall have their part in the lake of fire. You think you only tell lies when you open your mouth? Huh? The body language yeah. is a lie. All the time. The body language says something that your heart not saying. Oh, hey, oh, hey, the chambers. <laughs> Good to see you, sir. How are you? And everything. And in your heart, you are saying, you're balling. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, someone. Body language says something that your heart not saying. Hip hop. At the highest level. Yeah. Cut out the hypocrisy business. Yeah. Every one of us are workers together in the link and in the chain. If you see something going wrong, don't wait for it to mash up. Yeah. Bring it to the attention of the authorities. You're not an informer. Amen. You're your brother's keeper. Yeah. Like informer culture in the church. Like you are your brother's like keeper. Like like so don't wait till it mash up. Yes, Come on here. Like Absolutely, you're a brother's keeper. Yeah. Let's look quickly at working the fields. The mission is possible because God already declared it. Yeah. Hallelujah. But as laborers, we have to develop strategies for harvesting and reaping and working the fields. Strategies that will bring success and sustainability. Incorporated in all our strategies for mission must be the sustainability component. We can't just run somewhere and we do a quick thing and then we have nothing to support and sustain that. We have to have sustainable development when it comes to mission. Now the strategy will depend on the demography and the locational culture of the area. In other words, does an area to be targeted is predominant with young people, old people or middle-aged people? Is it a sporting community? Is it a docile community? Is it a drug and prostitution community? Is it a rich or poor community? These are evaluations and reconnaissances. Mean going to look at the area, doing a wrecking, a reconnaissance of the area. So you know what exists in the area so that you can know what type of strategy to build. Before the, the army went down to Montego Bay, with the state of murder and the zone of special operations. We did what you call, or I know that they did, let me better say, they did what is called a wrecking, a reconnaissance mission. You don't know that military intelligence people were there and undercover troops all over the place, flooding out the place, gathering intelligence. The police is a joint operation. We never just run, go them up each tent over police side and start to do X, Y. There was a detailed reconnaissance and intelligence and information gathering. By the time the Prime Minister made an announcement, everything was in place already. Absolutely. Amen. So you went in, you saw what the area was like, 
You know what the activities are. You know where the gangs are. You know what to do, whatever. You know how many exits are in the town. So the first thing you go, you, you went there, you see now, you control every exit. So who are running and protect Bush? You can okay, drive to the place. The point I am making, without delving any deeper, is to let you know that you have to do your reconnaissance. Gather intelligence, gather information, know what type of area you're going into. Is it an area that requires, amen, a blanketing? So you get every able-bodied person from the church. Is it just an area that needs, amen, maybe 15 or 20 people? All the intelligence gathering must be there. But bear in mind that everyone is supporting missions. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So if it's a case where you have to blanket the area, you are already potentially part of missions by virtue of being born again, baptized and filled. So you are a part of the mission team. You must get involved. Once we have the, this, the what we call a promulgation strategy, meaning going out to do it, there must be also a maintenance strategy. If you go to evangelize an area, you can just go there maybe at two or three weeks, depending on, on the gains that you have received, and then just leave it high and dry. You must have a maintenance strategy, a follow-up. It, it, it don't necessarily have to be more meetings, but it must be a presence in the area doing host to host or whatever type of evangelistic work that you, that you need to have done. Mr. Chambers is my timekeeper. <laughs> so there must be maintenance strategy. Only one day. Ten minutes more mission. Right. So you've got to have that presence. And you have to have what we call in the army hearts and minds activities. These are activities that will appeal to the community. You may get the RGD to come in. You may get health professionals even from your church to go in. Amen. You may look at the, the, the property aspect. If it's a poor area, maybe you have what, what I would call or what, what we used to do at some point in time. We call it soup and soul. We boil some big pot of soup and we go into certain areas with it as part of our strategy. And everybody that passed, we give them soup. And while we're giving them soup, you know, we're ministering, we're talking to them and everything. Soup and soul. That's what, we, that's what I, I call it. So we bring the soup and we give people. By the time we start giving out soup, the whole community come. And when we have a large enough number now, we start, even while we're giving the soup, we start to preach and do everything. And people will stay for the work. Hungry man, I will listen to you, man. So there must be what is called hearts and minds. Appeal to the hearts and the minds of the people through soft administrative opportunities and aspects. Yeah. Amen? So that's a part of a, of a maintenance strategy. Because once you, you're harvesting them, amen, you have to orchestrate something that will keep your presence alive in the area. Oftentimes we evangelize areas and then you find that when we leave, Adventist people come. But when they come, they're not. They evangelize on three months. And as we do one little week, everybody leave. One week! Come on, man. I'm going some guy come in and mineral and set up yourself, man. <laughs> I was telling people not to suppose it's a week, man. Hello? One week, Bishop. And everybody lean up. Tired and everything. Come on, man. 
and they are there three or four months. Oh, hallelujah. But what I find with that, a church, yeah? and they do hearts and minds and everything, so we can't go back once day. <laughs> what I believe we need to do as part of the strategy too, is that once they are there for three months, you know, everybody gam up the ear, every Adventist ear. So when you think of the same set of people, they're like, you make a sad mistake. They rotate it. Hmm? So sometimes this night, for two nights, some get rest and some come back. And right. things so are the whole thing, the strategy yeah. to keep the thing alive. Yeah. I can understand you run a one week, people go work, and sometimes you run late and all that thing there. Because we don't, we don't watch time, we don't see time. Same people. We come to church, and the thing is missions. And we sing out for three, four hours. Well, I'm exaggerating. <laughs> We come there for preach to people and everybody we sing and we call people testimony and then tell your friend when they're born. <laughs> we say just don't tell people what God will feel. And you start telling your friend when you ever come to hear that, that, that in the church, am yeah. <laughs> You're like me, really? Yeah. When you go there, we are mission, so we are a mission. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Manage your time. If you start 7 o'clock and you expect to go 9.30, manage your time. Yeah, You're yeah. seeking souls. Yeah. When people go on 9.30, preach are moving and go in business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't want to hear you. He said to himself, you know, this church is supposed to 7 to 9.30. And 9.30, the preacher does go. Come on. Manage your time. That's a part of stewardship. So if you come for praise and worship, we know you sing nice, but don't sing all the whole thing. Yeah. If we say half hour praise and worship, give us a nice, spicy, hot half hour of praise and worship. When the half hour don't come down. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. We have to manage time. We are setting examples for people. A man will come in. Don't think that every street meeting has some fool fool don't speak to come there with all the respect of them. Right, right. We have intellectual people. Yes, yes. I was at a street meeting Saturday in 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 in, in, in right. Bagger Road in, in, in Waterhouse at a school there and whatever. And in the dark you had two people at the fence calling them and calling and saying, please come in and so they won't come in. After the thing went and look. Just by looking at the people, you make an assessment. You see, say, I know the normal waterhouse people. You know, I say, get to be sure what's in society. Sorry. You know, say, these persons look like they, they came from overseas and perhaps were staying with somebody. Intellectual people. And they say, well, we love the message and blah, blah, blah. And the conversation. That was it, and then pray for us and that. Yeah. So, intellectual people will be there. Yeah. It's not one class and set of people. So, if you go there and just operate willy nilly, I'm not saying that we have to be hard and fast and cast the thing in concrete. But we must apportion the time properly so that we manage the time. It's a part of our stewardship when we go on mission. Amen? Amen. Amen. Alright. Let me finish the last one now. About six minutes. <laughs> Mentoring and making fishers of men. Once we identify potential candidates for evangelism, the first step is the mentoring process. Where persons are handpicked, mentored, and trained as additional or backup workers for the posterity, depending on the cadre of missionaries or evangelists that you have. In simple terms, whilst we have a cadre of missionaries, are already identified. We must have the next tier 
waiting in the wings, having also identified them and starting the training process. That means we always have continuity. If there's a need for backup, let's say we, we, we are canvassing an area and then somebody has gone somewhere and said, Bishop, this area is ripe. We will have continuity without breaking that. We can send an exit over here concurrently because we have had those persons who are in the wings that have been coming up, mentored, honed, ready to do the work as either back up or going straight into the work. Are you with me? Yes. So, once we do that, we continue now to build the labor force. Because the harvest is always disproportional to the workers. The harvest is always and will ever be greater than the workers. So we have to be proactive and constantly training, retraining, this type of developmental meeting and we bring in fresh blood and new people, amen, and using them, training them as backup and as part of a contingent of missions. Everyone then must be involved for this to be effective. You must be involved for this to be effective. Everyone who seeks to do the work of mission must be grounded in the faith. You can't be wavering as an apostle. You must be grounded in the faith. You must be taught in the defense of the doctrine. Even if I only defend, you can defend the doctrine. You must be taught in that. You must be conversant. Every single missionary our evangelists, our potential missionaries must be taught in word and doctrine. There must be doctrinal sessions where you take your persons aside and say, this is the doctrine, this is what we believe, this is why we believe it, this is how we come into being, this is what we promulgate, this is what we stand on, and this is what we live by. Thank you. Thank you. Powerful. Hello, somebody. Once we do all of that, time will not allow me to recap, but I'm sure you've gotten the meat of the matter tonight. Amen. Everyone here, I challenge you categorically, get involved in missions, the lifeblood of the church. Amen. Do not refuse to make yourself available when the call comes for you to serve. Hello. And let me say this as it dropped in my spirit before I hand over to Bishop. There will be some of us who will work harder than some of us. It's a natural phenomenon. And the workhorse will get more work. Because you are the workhorse. It's a natural phenomenon. No vex, man. No vex. It's because we see good in you and you're willing and you're ready to work. And we can trust your work. You have some, you have some work, man, you don't ever call them to. We drive a nail in the office. We can bend up, nail, pop up, and everything. But then there's another man who he can't finish one work. And in the sometimes they find your work, go up and the next work because he's in demand. Yeah. You must be in demand in the church. If 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 your reward for work is more work, do it as unto God and love God and do the work. That's right. Sometimes you know, they might kill you with work, you know. A hard who not work, you know, sit down, tired and mash up. <laughs> and you are work and you are going see it. God just renew your strength yeah. because he's expecting more of you. To do much is maybe, much is expected. So now watch who sit down. Let me say it nicely. Don't go 
much for sitting down. <laughs> Do your work as a to God. May God bless you tonight. And the mission still remains possible.